It's uh, well, it's hot here, Southern Africa. <sighs> Drinking a concoction right now. I can't tell you what it is. A lot of tea, some rasta herbs, blah blah blah. blah. Mm. No sugar, which means that well, <laughs> which means that you know, I'm not poisoning my body. I guess. Mm. And also, I'm taking. Wow, I'm uh. Well, wearing this hat for the last time, it's, uh, you know, it's one of the first hats my, my wife made in it, you know, this, this kind of style, but it's being retired, you know, so I'm not going to, um, it's just being retired, it's sort of, you know, it's made out of material, not, you know, so it's going to, so it was the last thing, but I figured I would do it. Um, real quick, not real quick, well, first of all, just, just some random, uh, well, random things, I guess, more specific. Uh, real quick on on a Gail King, Oprah or whatever, Gail King thing. Uh, first of all, uh, condolences to the uh, to the Bryant family for their loss losses and all who were on the that air that, that helicopter crash. I need to say something just about this uh, Gail King, just real quick. People have been bantering around journalism. You have to understand. People like Gail King, Charlemagne the God, all these kind of people. They are not journalists. Okay, they're not trained as journalists. As far as I understand, let me let me figure this out uh, for you. It's, it's, it's like this. First of all, I must say I I do actually have an undergraduate degree in journalism, so I almost know what I'm talking about, right? But here's the thing. Uh, 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 this thing, Chen. I, I mentioned this a long time ago. This whole thing about um, reporting uh, in South Africa. I'm, I live, I'm here in South Africa, in the Eastern Cape. South Africa. They have this when I forgot. It was kind of tripped out because they don't call it journalists or they. Have Broadcasters, whatever they, you know, call their anchors. They call them presenters because that's what they do. They're presenting something. That's what uh, Oprah. That's what well, Oprah. All those people. They're pre. They're presenters. They're, they're even their own research, not by not done by them. Not like back in the day. They have teams of people that research. They get advice from whatever the deal is. But the thing is, um, because he's not trained as a journalist. Because back then, when having, I think it's changed. I, when I started noticing. Maybe in the 80s, late 80s, 90s, I don't know, whenever it was, when they started to get um, people who weren't trained as journalists just to present, they look good on camera. And, and so, you know, that's what they got them for. You know, they may have went to journalism. Well, some then later on, people started going to, when they say, hey, this is lucrative, people started going to journalism school. Then we go, good looking people start to, to, to go and, and get hired by these, by, by uh, you know, by the foxes and stuff like that. That's why all the people look like they look. Okay. So, so when she went and did her thing, you know, she invited the, the sister uh, um, on on the on the program, you know, to talk about Kobe Bryant's legacy, I guess, um, because he was in the news because he just passed. But wow, man, um, the thing is, the first part of her thing was fine, you know, the whole question, but that second part when she went in, you can tell it was like what we call a sandbag. You know, she sandbagged it. She brought it here for one thing. She tried to ease in on that question, and then she went for the. To kill a punch. Well, a killer punch was heard all around the world, and it wasn't a killer punch because Lisa Leslie, the person she was uh, uh, interviewing, she handled it quite, you know, quite quite good. Whatever happened, then the backlash comes. Now everybody's getting upset. Well, baby, <laughs> Gail, you did it to yourself, and I know your girl because she has your your best friend's got to come to your back no matter what. You know, you you, you ride and die with your with, with your folk. You know what I mean? So I even understood uh, um, Oprah, you know, twisting things and trying to say it's sexist, whatever she was saying, and blah, blah, blah. I know, I know Snoop, you know, Snoop is, uh, Gail was out of pocket, but Snoop in an emotional kind of thing, you know. But remember, he's coming from a perspective, uh, that, that whole um, hip-hop, I don't want to say hip-hop perspective, but that perspective where the people, you know, they curse and they carry on and they, and they say what's on their mind or they're Instagramming, so they do it right away. There's no thought or whatever happened. Okay, here's my problem with that whole thing. When this Susan Rice, who the, you know, Secretary of State, whatever she was under Obama, when she comes out and joins the fray, you know, all these women are, I guess they're over 50, or maybe they're over, I don't know how old Susan Rice is, you know, but they're, but they're, they're, they're trying to talk to her, to berate or to try to deal with it, but the younger generations who don't, all I'm trying to say is, I don't know what the Susan Rice thing is. I mean, I guess she 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 wants to be famous, and she wants to she wants to, some spotlight or whatever. But she should have stayed out of it. A bunch of people should have stayed out of it. But let me not go on it. So what I'm trying to say, Gail King, she's just not a journalist, not really. So that's what it is. And plus, remember, she is doing the bidding. What I call, I'm 
I don't want to say anymore. I don't really want to say, you know, white, white, pop, whatever that is, that white. I call it a white mentality. OK, so it's, I don't really. Well, it's a white mentality. You have you have uh, what I call neo Negroes you know, who want to who, who, who want to be white. They want the, the fruits of, of, of whiteness. They don't want to stay black because, you know, black is the downtrodden and all the bottom levels. So they will do the bidding of uh, they will do the bidding of white of, 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 of the white power structure. And to do that, they have to have they have to erase their blackness, their, their struggle credentials or their or their. Uh, maybe they don't want to struggle. Whatever they, they have to race that, leave their people, and do the bidding of the white men, of the white mentality, which is like um, you know it's, uh, in South Africa, we're in South Africa, so it's like you can also call it a colonial mentality. Okay, you know, Fanon, the whole thing. You know, you get the you know the wretched, you know, Franz Fanon, your black see white mess. You know, you know the, when you win your liberation, the next thing you got to do is you got to really you got to chimaranga these people that, that these new these neo negroes that come. Come and want to be the, the the new leaders. You gotta you know get get rid of them anyway. But I I, I look at this essentially because um, I just found that I have to actually go back to the states for a bit for for the month of March. Got to do some stuff. Um, uh, so I'll be traveling. But I started to think about this because you know when you travel you have to use you, you, you use your passport. And I like I try to tell all ADOs people people traveling you might want to be you might want to be a Moor or whatever have you. But when you get when you get in line, they're gonna say Americans over there. Now you can say I'm a Moor. I ain't going over there. Whatever, whatever. I'm a Pan African. I'm not gonna. Yeah, but you're an American. Okay, passport. But here's let's talk about the that's a white talk about white mentality. Let's just talk about that for just a second. Then I'll end. Where where does the whole passport notion come from? You know, I we. Well, I, it must have come from the royals because you know you were king. You own not only the land and the fiefdom, but the people on the land. So if your person want to go to another province, something like that, they got to go to you for some permission, some sort of written paper, you know, stamp. That's passport, right? And that whole uh, notion, as we would say, um, just just switched over to passports. So basically, um, is my passport that that's traveling around me? I mean, I can travel without the passport, but uh, but but only but borders. But they have borders, and they only acknowledge passports because they're all into this, this what I call white mentality or colonial mentality thing. And they got to do the passport thing. But I was one time I was in I was in Belize. I was talking to this brother, and he says, "Brother, I don't understand. See that bird right there? That bird can go up to North America and go to any place they want. We don't need no passport. Why do I need a passport?" He had a good point there. And, and when I say you can't, you, you, there's certain things you can you, you you can try to quarantine or passport or, or you know border, but things like this whole coronavirus, this is amazing. That virus, that virus, it don't need no passport. Go any place they want. And what's uh, this is just an aside. I said I was on the end, but let me just say this is just a little aside. Here's the funny thing. Not funny. Here's a serious thing. There's so many Chinese people in higher education institutes. In the United States, and I'm wondering, and all over the world, I'm wondering what's going to happen because you know now you have that fear, you know, because fear is a powerful thing, and um, that's how they control things. So you have fear of this virus, and and it is associated strongly with with the Chinese. So I'm wondering what's happening to all these higher education. You go into class, and you're going to say, "There's a Chinese person. I just stay away from them, whatever have you." So this is this is really amazing. But let me get back to my point and just end it here. So all I'm saying is that uh, that what we What's happening now in the world is is super interesting because this whole coronavirus, a bunch of things, I, it has to do with depopulation, it has to do with control, and all this stuff uh, is just coming to a head. And I'm not even going to talk about the whole financial thing that's going to be coming down upon everybody pretty soon. So we're in, a, we're in uh, as we say, I hate to be uh, whatever about it, but we're in interesting times, unfortunately. <laughs> Interesting times means some upheaval, and whew, I don't know what's going to happen. That would be uh, I being me, T, from the Patterson's taking the trench to bed, letting you know what I only suspect from, uh, well, from the Eastern Cape of Southern Africa.